Hey guys, so today's video is a request from Elaine Mentz. Thank you so much for this request. I am a little embarrassed because I've lived in Nashville my entire life and I've never heard of this. Um, this is about the Stringbane murders and these happened in the 70s here in Nashville, Tennessee. David Aikman, who was um, known by his stage name, I guess you could call it as Stringbean, was an American singer, songwriter, musician, comedian, actor, and a semi-professional baseball player. But he was best known for being a um, cast member on the, ten on the TV show Hee Haw and a regular on the Grand Ole Opry. He was well known for his old fashioned banjo picking style and he mixed comedy in with his music. He was also remembered for his wardrobe, which consisted of a long night shirt tucked into a pair of short blue jeans that would be belted around his knees, giving the illusion of him having very short legs but being very tall and thin. He and his wife were sadly murdered by uh, burglars in their home in 1973 in rural Tennessee. Now, Aikman was a very um, easygoing guy, you could say. Um, he enjoyed hunting, he enjoyed fishing, and being used to the times of the Great Depression that he grew up in, <clears throat> he and his wife lived very frugally in a cabin located at 2308 Baker Road, which is near Ridgetop, Tennessee. Their only indulgences were a Cadillac and a color TV. Now, again, because of the Depression era and the bank failures that happened during the crash and afterwards, um, Aikman really didn't trust the banks with his money. So he was kind of infamous for having cash, um, all of his money basically in cash, in his home, on his person, hidden around his property, wherever even though he was by no means wealthy by entertainment industry standards. On Saturday night, November 10th, 1973, Aikman and his wife Estelle returned home after a night at the Grand Ole Opry. When they pulled up to their cabin, Aikman reportedly noticed something off about his front porch. He told his wife to wait in the car and he approached the home alone with a 22 caliber pistol that he carried with him for protection and when he went inside, two men were waiting for him. These two men were his 23-year-old cousins, John Brown and Doug Brown. They had already torn his cabin apart looking for the money that they knew he kept there. <clears throat> now, when they were unable to find money in the home, or maybe enough money, they decided to wait for Aikman to return home and rob him. <clears throat> now, from what I read, as soon as they went for him, obviously Aikman was defensive and Doug Brown shot him dead. His wife Estelle had approached the house at this point. Um, she turned around and ran, screaming, begging for mercy. Doug Brown followed her out into the yard where he shot her in the back of the head. They got away with just $250 that they found in Aikman's front overall pocket, as well as Estelle's purse and a few guns and they left driving the couple's station wagon. Now, investigators would later find thousands of dollars on the couple's bodies that were sewn into their clothing. Their bodies were discovered the next morning by a close friend and fellow cast member of Hee Haw and the Grand Ole Opry, Grandpa Jones. Now, Grandpa Jones later um, testified at the trial of Doug and John Brown that one of the weapons that they used to kill Aikman was a weapon that was owned by Aikman and in fact was a gun that Grandpa Jones had given to Aikman. At the trial, each defendant blamed each other for the homicides. Doug Brown fought his convictions um, in the appellate courts, but the judge um, denied giving him any new trial. Now, in a later interview with the Nashville Banner, Doug admitted to his part in the robbery but he stated that John Brown was the one who filed, fired the fatal gunshots. However, because Doug Brown had, by his own admission, committed a burglary that resulted in a death, he was guilty of murder, regardless of who fired the shots, under Tennessee's felony murder rule. Now, Doug Brown died of natural causes in 2003 at the Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary in Petros, Tennessee, and he is buried there in the prison cemetery. John Brown was incarcerated in the Lois M. DeBerry Special Needs Facility in Nashville. 
He pleaded for forgiveness and logged a record of good behavior in the decades after the murders. And in 2014, despite a campaign from Opry stars Bill Anderson, Jan Howard, Gene Shepard, and Mac Wiseman for him to remain incarcerated, the Tennessee Board of Parole voted to free him. And um, after many battles with the parole board, in 2014, he was granted parole and released after serving 41 years of a 198 year sentence. David and Estelle Aikman are buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Gardens in Goodlettsville. Bluegrass artist Sam Bush recorded a song called The Ballad of String Bean and Estelle, which tells the story of their murders for a 2009 album. The couple's best friends were Grandpa Jones and his wife, who was a fiddler player and singer, Ramona Jones. Ramona said of the couple, they were such gentle people, both of them, sweet, gentle people that loved nature and spent most of their free time fishing in a creek. We bought a farm together in 1955. We lived in the white house that was closer to Baker Road and String Bean and Estelle lived in the small cabin just behind that house. They said they should take the small one because we had children and they didn't. Now in the late 1950s, the Jones family actually, actually moved to Washington DC and the Aikmans took possession of the White House, but they still continued to live in the small cabin behind the house. On a radio show just seven days after the murder, Grandpa Jones um, was quoted to have said, they were just about as happy a couple as I'd ever seen. I think they suited each other the best of any two people I've ever seen. On the night of String Bean's final Opry performance, he sang the song Y'all Come and Hillbilly Fever. Then he, Estelle, and the Jones family sat backstage for a while and talked until String Bean's second slot of the night, which started at 10.18 p.m. Aikman and Kurt Gibson performed the songs Going to the Grand Ole Opry and Hot Corn Cold Corn. After walking off, Aikman and Gibson rehearsed the song for the next week's Opry. Steve Gibson says, they went back there and sang one called Lord I'm Coming Home. That was the last song String ever sang and it was a rehearsal. The last lines of the song Aikman sang are coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Open wide thine arms of love, Lord I'm coming home. Now, uh, one last interesting bit about this story is that way down the road in 1996, a man who was renting String Bean's cabin noticed scraps of paper sticking out from behind the stones in the back of the fireplace. He removed some of the stones and found the remains of $20,000. However, the stash was so decayed and half eaten by insects and mice that it was rendered useless. So that is the story of the string bean murders. Thank you so much again, Elaine, for that request. Um, again, I'd never heard of it and it was really interesting and very sad to hear. Um, but next time I'm up in the Goodlettsville area, I'll have to check out where they're at. <clears throat> that would be very interesting to go see. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button below. If you have any suggestions for videos, true crime or otherwise, please leave those in the comments below. If you want to see more videos, please hit the subscribe button. I upload new videos every Wednesday. And other than that, I will see you guys next week. Bye.